Oops. We all make mistakes. Even the most experienced programmer can miss the simplest of details. They have been working on and reviewing their product for some time now, and it's very easy to miss that one detail that can throw off the entire project. They need a fresh set of eyes to review and test their work for minor changes and defects. This review or software testing process is critical in producing a quality product. In addition, the money saved and the risk reduced in performing this upfront task can be substantial. What exactly is software testing? Software testing, whether it's automated or manual, is just a way to determine if the product behaves the way it's supposed to. The sooner in the process you find the defects, the better it will be with regards to time, quality, and profit. There is a flow or a method to the software testing process. It's called the SDLC, or the Software Development Life Cycle. SDLC consists of these stages. Planning and requirements. This step involves the initial assessment and study of the software. Usually, a senior member of the team plans the basic project approach. This stage is also used for identifying the risks associated with the project. Defining requirements. This is where the product requirements are clearly defined and approved. This is where the SRS is developed. SRS is Software Requirement Specification Document. Design and Product Architecture. Based on the SRS, this is where the design approach is proposed. The DDS, Design Document Specification, defines the architectural model of the product. Building or developing the product. The product is built in this stage. Programming code is generated in languages such as C, C++, Java, or PHP, for example. This is determined in the design document specs. Testing the product. Though testing is performed throughout the SDLC, this stage is for product testing only to see if it measures up to the SRS. Defects are reported here. Fixing the defects and retesting is also done here. The last stage of the SDLC is deployment and maintenance. Once the product is tested and ready to be deployed, it is released into the appropriate market. Once deployed into the market, maintenance is done for the existing customer base. There are some theoretical ideas and principles that have been established over the last several years when it comes to testing. Seven principles have been established. Principle 1. Testing shows the presence of defects, which means that testing can't prove there are no defects. However, testing can reduce the number of undiscovered defects remaining in the software. Principle two is exhaustive testing is impossible. We should use risks and priorities to focus our testing efforts. The third principle is early testing. Testing early in the SDLC is advised and testing should be focused on defined objectives. Principle four. Defect clustering. This is where you discover if a small number of modules contain the most defects or operational failures. Principle five is pesticide paradox. Running the same tests over and over will not catch a new defect or bug that may be introduced. You need to perform new and different tests in order to catch the new defects. The sixth principle is testing is context dependent which simply means that different kinds of sites are tested differently. And the last principle is absence of errors fallacy. If the program isn't helpful to the end user, all the testing and fixing of bugs won't help. Software designers and developers are creative. Therefore, it makes sense that the programs they create are like artwork to them. It's personal, intimate, and a source of pride to them. They are very protective of their creation. A developer can test his own code, but it becomes necessary at some point to have it independently tested. As an outside tester, you must take care to communicate in a clear and courteous manner with regard to testing objectives and possible defects, so as not to offend. The developer is creating a solution to a problem, and the tester is looking for errors in the solution. You must be careful in how to present these issues. Each organization will have its own procedures for testing. 
No matter the procedure, it's important that what we're testing is clearly understood by all members of the team. We all make mistakes, but a quality product is possible if we work as a team and keep these points in mind.